Another maker football. You know, each college football team experiences certain windows of opportunity. And with eight returning starters on offense, the Big Ten's leading offense, nine returning starters from the number one ranked defense, and Coach Tiller's largest senior class ever, this Big Ten window of opportunity is wide open for Purdue football. I think this year, uh, you know, with this senior class, number one, there's 23 seniors, which is our largest senior class. But also the talent uh, that, uh, that is in this senior class would suggest that we'll have more players drafted. And uh, I can only, I can only uh, tell everyone about what we experienced this spring and that we had more pro visits by pro scouts and pro activity on our campus uh, than we've had in the last six years. So obviously there's a lot of interest at the next level uh, in the players that we have playing for us this year. So this is a class, uh, not only a talented class, but an extremely bright class, too. I think it's one of the rare classes of Purdue football history, really. I, you know, when I get thinking that I've got a chance to go watch uh, Stuart Schweiger play, you know, he's been a four-year starter. It's my last chance to see him play. Uh, go see John Staniford, who's been a four-year starter, my last chance to see him play. Um, I'm not a fan. I'm a coach. But on Saturday, you're going to see a whole lot of fan come out in me because I just admire watching those guys play. Seeing this is my last season here at Purdue, my senior season with seven home games. I mean, this is this is the year for me, and I think it's a year for Purdue as a whole program. Um, you know, there's a window of opportunity here that hasn't been around in the last couple of years. College football, uh, I think experience is the number one factor that decides more games. I think close games are won because of experienced players. If you'll go back to our Rose Bowl year, the reason we came back and won games in that year, we had the same players, but the reason we did it is because they were experienced. They were one year older. We're going to have a similar type team this year, uh, and even, even more so in the sense that we have more experience, more returning starters uh, than we've had since we've been at Purdue. So if you were to ask me, and again, I'm not a soothsayer, but if you were to ask me, I would suggest that this would be the most exciting football team uh, that we've had the privilege of putting on the field for Purdue. Well, this is my senior year, and I'm tell you right now, I'm on a mission. This is it. This is all the marbles. This is for everything we got. Another 12-game season, including seven big home contests, awaits the Boilermakers. The season opens at home September 6th against Mac Powerhouse Bowling Green. After a trip to Wake Forest on September 13th, Purdue returns to the friendly confines of remade ross Aid Stadium for four straight home games against Pac-10 Arizona, Notre Dame, Illinois for homecoming, and Penn State. Then it's off to Wisconsin and Michigan before coming back to West Lafayette for the last two home games of the season against Northwestern November 1st and Iowa on the 8th. A November 15th trip to Ohio State precedes the 106th meeting between Purdue and Indiana in Bloomington. Enjoy all the fun and excitement of what promises to be a big season for Purdue football. Order your tickets today by calling 1-800-49-SPORT or visit us on the web at www.purduesports.com. Now let's take a look at the 2003 Boilermaker offense. And of course, we've got to start with the quarterback position. Kyle Orton's the guy. He finished off very strong in 2002 and capped it off with a brilliant performance in the 2002 Sun Bowl. Uh, was voted most valuable player. You know, Kyle has it all, the size, the strength, and the ability to avoid the rush. But most of all, he has the great arm and the ability to stand in the pocket and deliver the football. Well, I think when you look at the quarterback position at Purdue at this point in time, uh, you, you might question whether or not we have a quarterback in controversy. Uh, in our opinion, we do not. And the reason we do not is because we think Kyle Orton really, uh, last year, the last regular season game, the IU game, and then the Sun Bowl game, he really separated himself from the rest of the competition. Um, and to his credit, he had uh, a good spring practice. So Kyle really has elevated his game um, and should perform this year at a level that we're a little more used to at the quarterback position. Now, I look at the position, you've got to have three qualities. First of all, I think you have to have a great grasp of the offense, and I think Kyle has gotten to that point where he's very comfortable with what Coach Tiller wants him to do. Second of all, you've got to be able to make plays. Kyle has the ability to deliver the football on time and throw the long ball as well. 
And third, and most important of all, you've got to be able to win football games. And Kyle has exhibited that ability to do that in key games, and he's looking forward to a tremendous 2003 season. The Boilermakers also have a very capable backup in Brandon Kears. And Brandon offers a little bit different uh, perspective than Kyle. He has the ability to make plays outside the pocket. He's a very accurate thrower, but it's very dangerous when he gets out into the open field. And, and Brandon had over 1,400 yards total offense last year, so he's a guy that can come in and really provide a spark. The good news for Purdue football fans are the fact that both these quarterbacks got better over the spring. There was a gap between them before they entered the spring. They finished the spring, and the gap was the same, but both of them had taken one more step further up the ladder. The Boilermakers are blessed at the running back position. They have four excellent ball carriers, and led by Joey Harris, who had over 1,100 yards last year. Great speed and great ability to take it the distance. A nice compliment to Joey is Brandon Jones, who has the ability to get yardage up inside, had over 600 yards rushing last year. Gerard Void is the touchdown maker. Had 10 touchdowns last year. Great in short yardage opportunities. And Jerome Brooks, the redshirt freshman, has everybody on the coaching staff very excited about his abilities in the open field. Well, as you know, Brandon's the bigger one out of all of us. So people say he's more of the bruiser. Gerard, Gerard's got the size, like height-wise, and the speed. So he's kind of our tweener guy. Jerome has more shakes than any running back I've ever seen before. You know, he can break anyone's ankles. So he's guy that has a lot of the moves and I'm just I'm just I guess I'm somewhere in the middle you know I have some speed I have a little bit of size so I mean I'm just a I guess a little bit of everything uh, in our entire squad the most depth and talent that we have is at the uh, at the running back position the boilers have a great receiving core this year led by John Standiford who had 75 catches last year for over 1300 yards he's their home run hitter and Kyle Orton feels a great deal of confidence in John uh, it seems like John Staniford, it's kind of interesting because John started for us as a true freshman coming out of Monrovia, Indiana. Um, and here he is now his senior year. And, uh, of course, uh, John has a chance to, uh, to leave Purdue as the all-time leading receiver. Matter of fact, if he has just an average year, he will be our all-time leading receiver. However, we think he's elevated his game to the point where uh, fans watching our, our receivers uh, this year and, and John Staniford, uh, I wouldn't want to pass up this guy's senior year. I'd want to see him play as often as I could because of the talent and the fact that, uh, you know, he's an Indiana kid that, that's doing it on the field. Taylor Stubblefield is their possession receiver, had 77 catches last year, and is a guy on third down that Kyle likes to find to round out this talented core. Anthony Chambers, Ray Williams, and tight end Charles Davis. Anthony, as you remember, had the big punt return against Notre Dame for a touchdown, has a, a lot of playmaking abilities, and if certainly Ray Williams has the ability to go deep and is that home run threat that the Purdue fans have longed for for a number of years. And of course, Charles Davis, a great blocking tight end, but also has the ability to catch the football, looking for big production this year. The critical component of any offense is the offensive line, and Purdue's offensive line has some question marks going into the spring, but certainly coming out of the spring, it is viewed as a strength by Coach Tiller. At the left offensive tackle is redshirt freshman Mike Otto, who they love, and they think he's going to be a, an excellent performer for this line. On, on the left guard position, Tyler Moore has served a two-year apprenticeship, and he's ready to show his wares. At center position, Nick Hardwick, has played three different positions for Purdue, but I think he has found a home at the center position, a great leader, a great competitor, and he'll be looked upon to make those calls along the line of scrimmage. At the right guard position is Matt Turner, brother of Rob Turner, who played uh, so well at Purdue, and he's a guy that has an excellent ability. And, of course, at the right tackle position, Kelly Butler, who has started 25 ball games for Purdue, an excellent all-Big Ten type performer, and really the anchor of that offensive line. Joe Tiller's offensive attack has always been a big hit to the home crowd in ross Aid Stadium. Speaking of hits, I've been on the receiving end of some big hits in my career. But what does that big hit feel like to the hitter? We'll tell you when we come back. Just how big is the talent on the Purdue football team? Show them, Kelly. <laughs> Purdue football. It's big. So how big are the plays in a Purdue football game? 
chalk, Kyle. Purdue football, it's big. What if there were a place where people still believe they can change the world? Where creativity guides technology and where ideas are created and challenged every single day. What if there were a place where finding the answers is just the beginning? That place is Purdue. It's here. Well, at least we had a decent lunch. I can't believe I didn't see that coming. Is this mustard? How will we ever get there when we're always a step behind? Maybe it's pie. Well, we won't find the answers inside. We could talk to Purdue. Purdue? Wait a minute. I didn't have pie. Just how big are the hits at a Purdue football game? Show them, Stu. <laughs> Purdue football, it's big. How big is the fun at a Purdue football game? Show them, Rowdy. <laughs> Purdue football, it's big. Welcome back. Have you ever wondered what the big hit feels like to the hitter? Well, to find out, let's talk to two of Purdue's biggest hitters. I always want to stick my head in there, you know? I like to, I love the contact. I'm real aggressive, and, you know, when I hit someone, I really want to hit somebody. I go in there, run my feet, wrap up my arms, you know, and I just want to, I love punishing players, especially offensive players. You know, uh, like Ray uh, Lewis said, you know, I don't, I don't hit people to hurt them. I hit them to take their souls. And, you know, that's kind of the model you have to have, especially as a linebacker. You know, you want to hit someone as hard as you can every time. And that's the way you'll make it in this game. The big hit for me, I have to say this, for my career, probably be against Iowa this last season. And, uh, you know, you see that ball in the air, and the receiver is just not even looking at you. And, and I mean, it's such a ferocious hit that the guy, I mean, he's falling down, and you don't feel anything. I mean, sometimes you see some of these hits, and you're like, oh, my God, these guys... You know, they gotta feel it, but it's sometimes on the lighter hits when you and when you feel it more, you kind of go in there a little sluggish. And this one, when you just unload on someone and don't even think about it and go on there and you know you're looking at him down on the ground and you don't feel anything, and then you feel your, your teammates come around you and just slapping you on the helmet, and it's just it's one of the best feelings you ever had in your life. I mean, you just you don't feel any type of pain, any type of tiredness, nothing. And you're just sitting there looking at this guy and he doesn't want to get up, and you can see it in his eyes he doesn't want to play football anymore. And that's how you want every every hit to get. I think. You know, I've seen Nico Kudavides hit guys before, and they don't know where they're at, and, and that's what you want. You don't want these guys come in there thinking they can run across the middle or go deep and do whatever they want. You want them to go on the sideline and not want to play football anymore, and I think that, that's what the big hit does, and that's how you win games. Yeah, I've had some big hits, but um, my big hit is still yet to come in my college days. This year, I, it's going to come around, and, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward for that opportunity to lay someone out. Well, if you like big hits, you're going to love the 2003 Boilermaker defense. They returned nine of 11 starters from the defense that was ranked number one in the Big Ten last year. Let's take a look at this year's defense. Let's start out with the defensive line, and you have to look to Sean Phillips. Great pass rusher, one of the all-time leaders in sacks at Purdue. Great crowd pleaser and really gets the defense going. Craig Terrell, defensive tackle, fifth-year senior, great against the run. Really a solid blue-collar worker at the defensive tackle spot. At the other defensive tackle slot, Brent Grover, sophomore, really was an outstanding playmaker, converted linebacker, excellent athlete at the defensive tackle position. And the other defensive end, Kevin Nesfield, another fifth-year senior, is a great playmaker, great compliment to Sean Phillips at the defensive end slot. The strength of this Purdue defense has to be in the linebacker position. First of all, at the weak side, Landon Johnson from Texas has the ability to make plays all over the field. Great speed, great athlete. And in the middle, Nico Kudavides, leading tackler for Purdue, all Big Ten performer last year, and really the heart and soul of the middle of that defense. And on the other side, Gilbert Gardner, starter a couple years ago, had the big play in the Sun Bowl, returned the, uh, the fumble for a touchdown. Just a terrific linebacking crew, voted as high as fifth best crew in the nation. 
I don't think there's any question uh, in, in, in our minds, nor anyone else's minds, I think, around the Big Ten Conference, and that Purdue is uh, excellent in one particular area defensively, and that's at the linebacking core. I think our linebackers are ranked justifiably so as one of the top ten groups in the country, and maybe one of the top five groups in the country by some publications, and, uh, and we believe that's justified. Let's move our focus to the secondary, and of course the headliner is Stu Schweiger, career interception leader for Purdue, two-time Thorpe Award finalist, four-year starter, just a terrific athlete at the safety position, great open field tackler. And a guy at the strong safety position, Dante Farrell, excellent special teams player, but he gets his opportunity to be the starting safety this year. And at the cornerback position, Antoine Rogers and Jock Reeves, two experienced corners, both with great speed, both terrific athletes. Well, a high-powered offense and a stifling defense are two of the reasons this promises to be a big season in 2003. But as you look around the renovations of ross Aid Stadium, once again you see evidence that this is one of the elite stadiums around the country. But in addition to the recent renovations, there are also other additions that mean big fun to Boilermakers of all ages. Stay tuned, we'll talk about that when we come back. Just how big is the talent on the Purdue football team? Show them, Kelly. Purdue football, it's big. Just how big are the hits at a Purdue football game? Show them, Stu. Purdue football, it's big. How far would you need to go? to see the future, to find out now how new technologies will transform your business and open the door to unseen opportunity. Where would you look for ideas that can take you further? Purdue, it's here. Well, at least we had a decent lunch. I can't believe I didn't see that coming. Is this mustard? How will we ever get there when we're always a step behind? Maybe it's pie. Well, we won't find the answers inside. We could talk to Purdue. Purdue? Wait a minute. I didn't have pie. So how big are the plays in a Purdue football game? Show them, Kyle. Purdue football, it's big. How big is the fun at a Purdue football game? Show them, Rowdy. Purdue football, it's big. Heading into the 2003 season, there's more than stadium renovation for fans to look forward to. Here to tell us a little bit about that is Joel Rasmus, Director of Promotions and Advertising for Purdue Athletics. We're excited about three new initiatives that we're introducing this year. Uh, first, Family Fan Zone, enable uh, families to purchase tickets for just $140 a ticket for all seven home games, uh, putting families sitting together in the same area, and then developing new interaction opportunities for those families uh, with Purdue Pete and Rowdy, with the cheerleaders, the dance team, and in, in, in fact, even the uh, American Marching Band up into the stands to meet with the families. So a great new addition to ross Aid Stadium. I think when you evaluate the, the Family Fan Zone, at 20 bucks a game, that's a, 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 an unbelievable uh, value in terms of cost per hour. For instance, let's go to a movie theater and try to, try to watch movies at the same price. We can't do that. So I, I think it's a, from an entertainment point of view, the opportunity for a family to be together for 20 bucks a game, I don't know how you can top that. We're excited about adding a mini-season ticket package to the opportunities that we're giving fans this year. Uh, a fan who can't uh, attend all seven games because of scheduling is able to put together their own four-game ticket package. They can pick any four games off the seven-game home schedule, uh, pick those four games out for $136, put together their own season ticket package. Uh, I think Purdue's done a, uh, a, a great service to our fans uh, by offering uh, the, the uh, mini-season ticket package where they can select 
uh, for the games of their choice. We've introduced Boilermaker Street Fest this year, which will start uh, a minimum of two hours before kickoff every day with uh, live bands, activities, fun games, uh, meet the team areas where uh, you can shoot, uh, shoot hoops with the starting five or, or kick a goal with our soccer team. And certainly those fans sitting on the east side of Ross State Stadium are going to notice a lot of difference. Uh, last year we were able to introduce the renovation to the west side of the stadium and this year the east side gets its chance. So uh, I think fans will recognize that there's more concession stands, more merchandise stands and a lot more restrooms uh, on that side. But the concourses are wider, the seats are a little wider, the aisles are wider. So um, it's all about making uh, Boilermaker football more accessible, more enjoyable, uh, making it just a great experience for any of our fans that come in. So 2003 promises to be a big season. Big hits, big plays, big talent, big fun. Who's the biggest hitter on the team and who's the biggest trash talker? When we return, we have an interesting segment that you won't want to miss. So stay tuned, everybody. So how big are the plays in a Purdue football game? Show them, Kyle. Purdue football, it's big. Just how big are the hits at a Purdue football game? Show them, Stu. Purdue football, it's big. What if there were a place where people still believe they can change the world? Where creativity guides technology and where ideas are created and challenged every single day. What if there were a place where finding the answers is just the beginning? That place is Purdue. It's here. How far would you need to go to see the future? To find out now how new technologies will transform your business and open the door to unseen opportunity. Where would you look for ideas that can take you further? Purdue, it's here. Just how big is the talent on the Purdue football team? Show them, Kelly. <laughs> Purdue football, it's big. How big is the fun of the Purdue football game? Show them, Rowdy. <laughs> Purdue football, it's big. Welcome back. Well, we've talked a lot about the players on the field, but let's, let's get a little insight here of what teammates think of other teammates. Who's the biggest trash talker? Who's the biggest clown? Who's the biggest hitter? Let's, let's listen. There's a lot of big hitters, but the guy that's on my mind is probably my roommate, Nico Kudavides. Uh The biggest hitter is uh, Landon Johnson. Landon Johnson. My man, Gilbert Garden. I'd, I'd say it's Nico. Landon Johnson. But I gotta say Nico. Nico's probably the biggest hitter. No doubt, Landon Johnson's the biggest hitter, best hitter on the team as well. Biggest hitter on the team besides me, Landon Johnson. For someone who's Landon's size, you know, he's not the heaviest of linebackers, but he knows how to really lower his hips and get a good punch. And believe me, I felt a couple of his hits and they, they aren't good. Biggest nerd on the team. Bobby Wichiku is pretty smart. I wouldn't say nerd, I didn't mean nerd. It has to be Brent Grover. Uh, I would say Brent Grover's the smartest guy by far. I'm gonna have to go with Josh Thompson. Because <laughs> he's not really the smartest guy on the team. The guy who thinks he's the smartest is me. I think I know everything. Nico's the guy with all the theories. We, we have a lot, a lot of smart guys on the team. Biggest trash talker easily, without a doubt, would be Nico Kudavides. It's Nico Kudavides. Nico Kudavides. Nico Kudavides. <laughs> Nico Kudavides. By far, Nico. That's got to be Nico, easy. Biggest trash talker? Oh. By far, I think I pulled this one away myself. I'm a, I'm a big trash talker, but Nico probably takes the cake. Sean Phillips comes up a little bit against me, but um, I don't think he's very close. The worst thing I, he said to somebody was like, 
a guy was talking this and that, like, I don't even know who you are. You're not even on my scouting report. Who are you? If I'm in the area and someone puts a, any type of big hit on someone, oh, I'm talking. He talks trash to us. He talks trash to the other team. He probably talks trash to people walking in the streets. Our defense plays great with emotion, and that's when we play our best ball. The biggest clown on the team is probably Drew Rucks. Drew Rucks, I'd have to say. Our team, if you get around us more, we're all kind of clowns. But Drew Rucks, some of the things that come out of his mouth are kind of fun. The biggest clown on our team would have to be Drew Rucks. Drew Rucks, definitely Rucks. You looking at him right now. Drew Rucks always, always does different impressions. He uh, actually does an impression of Coach Teller. That's really funny. This year, fellas, the theme is Purdue football, it's big. So I expect everyone to play big. So what we're going to do, we're going to go out here and have us a hell of a football season there, boys. I'd have to say the, the biggest ladies man on our team would have to be Brandon Jones. I would say Brandon Jones. Biggest lady man is probably Sean Phillips. I No comment. <laughs> it's probably Sean Phillips. I'm sweet and innocent. That's how I like to keep it. Biggest ladies man. Brandon Jones, he lied. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with Landon Johnson. Brandon Jones. I so I could say me on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have for today. Make sure you order your tickets for the upcoming 2003 season. It's gonna be a big one. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Herman. Should I hit him with a sermon? I think you should hit Just a little bit? I think you the, the, because the sermons, you know, they, they, they get the team ready. And, and the Lord has called upon you guys, sports people, the people who staff. And they said that this year, the Lord put in y'all head to say the Purdue football is big. And it's very big. And we're going to go out there and we're going to win every game for the Lord. So what we need is all you fans to come out and support us with your ticket buying, tithes, offerings, all that. We need your support. In Jesus' name, amen.